Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and Joanna Jubilis of the Belmont Citizen Herald is joining us for our regular weekly update. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So welcome, Joanna. How are you? I'm great, Michael. How are you? I'm fine. So let's start with a piece of news that's really unfortunate, and I'm speaking of the recent graffiti incident at the Wellington Elementary School. Yes, uh, there was a notice that went out to families, all Belmont Public School families on Monday, March 29th, informing them about this graffiti incident that was discovered by Wellington fourth graders on the outside of the Wellington Elementary building. Apparently there were, there was racial slurs written on the outside of the building. And there was also in another area on a different location of the building was a profanity. So the principal, Heidi Paisner, sent out an email first that you know expressed how upsetting this was to them and how they handled it and how proud they were of the fourth graders who reported it. And then, you know, Superintendent Phelan also sends out an email just again reiterating um, how upsetting it was. It was it was racist, devaluing painful to read and and unacceptable. Also just saying how, you know, the Pelham Public Schools stand in solidarity and are in full support of black and brown families. What's important to note, Mike, is that they believe this was not a member of the school community that did it. However, it is, you know, under investigation. All right. So it's also not the first time something like this happened at a Belmont Public School. I think in um, 2018, the, the Chenery had something similar in one of the, the bathrooms on the walls. And then and there might have been um, another incident even further back at, at the same school. But I mean, it doesn't happen often, but it has happened before. And never good when it does happen, Joanna. Right, especially in today's climate, more than ever. All right. So, um, Joanna, I understand that Belmont has a new director for facilities. What can you tell us about him? Sure, I can. I actually met him. I got to take a picture of him uh, this week. His name is David Blazon, and he's from Lowell. And he actually has 30 years of experience in facilities maintenance, and he previously before taking this job in in Belmont uh, was the director of public works and and recreation for Devons, community of Devons. Okay. Prior to that, what I found interesting was that uh, he was actually um, the director of public works for the town of Shirley. So I was curious and I asked our town administrator, Patrice Garvin, who was formerly town administrator for Shirley before she came to Belmont, if she happened to know him when he worked there for that short time. And she said she did know him only for a few months because she was leaving, I guess, when he began. But I found that I found that interesting. And um, his salary. So, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, again, he applied for the job. He was one of 32 applicants who responded. There were four candidates interviewed. He was one of the two finalists. And um, his annual salary will be 125,000 a year. He has uh, the same town benefits as other town employees. However, he does have one additional perk. He has a town issued electric vehicle that he can commute to and from work with and you know, drive around town. His job is to oversee every town and school building. So it's a big job. And, um, and, and, and you know, Steve Dorrance, the former facilities director uh, he resigned, so we've we've been without a facilities director, permanent facility director, since November. Jay Marcotte, our director of public works, was filling in as the interim interim facilities director while they were doing the search, and the job was posted in November. So, so it is it's a shared it's a position that you know he works he works for both the town and the schools. However, his salary comes out of the town budget, not the school budget. Okay. Um, so, um, to change to change uh, what we're talking about, Joanna. So I'm I'm understanding that as the weather is warming up, we may soon see some outdoor dining options. Um, 
on Leonard Street. What's what's the news there? Well, last year, if you recall, due to COVID, Leonard Street became one way to allow for outdoor seating at many of the Belmont Center restaurants because they were suffering so much they couldn't have customers inside their restaurants anymore. So to help them, they, they had outdoor dining. They introduced outdoor dining. And this was not just Belmont. This was many other communities that did this. So now it could become perhaps... Uh, even when COVID is a thing of the past, this could become a, a, an annual tradition in our, in our town where when the warmer months come, the street becomes one way. So the select board on Monday, the 29th, approved this plan and it's slightly different from last year. And people would be interested to know that. Um, it will have um, parking on the CVS side between the CVS crosswalk and Alexander Avenue. Those will all be parking spaces. And there's also going to be 15 minute parking spaces on Shanning to allow for people who are just getting takeout. Just a quick little stop and go spot. You won't even need to feed the meter, which is good. Okay. And then there are also will be parking in front of Cuvée Wine because when you're buying a case of wine, you don't want to have to walk really far with your wine to your car. This is exactly what Director of Community Development Glenn Clancy said. So we have to have some parking in front of Cubay. So, then- so this, so Joanna, the big news there is that this is a very thoughtful plan. Right. It's, so it's not just thinking about the restaurants, it's thinking about the other businesses. They, they took everybody's concerns into consideration and they came up with this plan and hopefully everybody's happy now and they will begin it on May 3rd. And they're saying it could go through October 31st. They don't. They don't know if that will change. It, it will all depend on the circ. You know, the circumstances. If circumstances change, if traffic gets really bad, um, it's kind of a wait and see kind of thing. But it, it's pretty exciting. All right. Well, we'll have to see, and, and I know that we'll all be looking forward to that. And so, lastly, Joanna, um, I understand that you have some news about the Belmont Human Rights Commission. People would be interested to, to see the, that they actually have a new logo um, that the select board endorsed on Monday night. It was created by Belmont Gallery of Art <clears throat> co-director, Adine Storer. And um, it's it's a logo that they'll use as, as they do their community outreach. And they said, you know, it's it's important to have a recognizable logo, especially with you know today's environment. And you know, they hope to be using it a lot. It's human human rights commission you know they, they support anti-racism and you know they're a really good organization been around a long time in belmont all right well thank you so much joanna we'll talk with you next time and you can find more news from belmont citizen herald at belmont.wickedlocal i'm sorry belmont.wickedlocal.com you've been watching the belmont journal news now i'm mike crowley and we'll see you soon